Boy. Some days, uh, as you can tell by my hair, <laughs> some days are just a challenge, aren't they? You wake up in the morning and you do your routine, but no. Um, <laughs> the humorous part is that trying to get this camera fixed with its microphone, it's a Logitech Orbis here. It's been a challenge for the last 24 hours in the sense of it broke because I cleaned it, <laughs> which was a bad idea. Don't, don't, you know, fix something that isn't broke. But I decided to clean it up, you know, and a little bit of cleaning agent slipped down into the microphone and stand and it's like messed it all up and bingo. It's been about the last 24 hours trying to repair and adjust and get other microphones set up and go price out things and then ask on the internet and do all these things and doing the faithful things that God wanted me to do but at the same time recognizing that you know in the final analysis we have to trust him always and that he will bring about miracles when we need them it's not always a matter of just having it oh well you know you're going to go out and do a miracle no it's just Sometimes it may not be the first resort or the last resort, it's just timing. And so, I really appreciate the equipment God's given me over the years, because it's so rare, you know, that uh, I don't like to spend money on ministry, so I go way out of my way to find just the right thing that'll last seemingly forever. And in that, I just thank God for my little Orbit Sphere camera. <laughs> with its little microphone and its little lens. It seems to work just right for what we need it for. So praise the Lord, we're back. And though the trials are challenging, the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. You know, what's interesting is that God says not that he'll forgive us our sins or blot out our transgressions because of our righteousness or because of our goodness or because he loves us, but he says, I will do it for mine own sake because he wants to. He chooses to. It's his choice. He never had to, but since he created us, he made us, he knows us, he knows our weaknesses, he blots out our transgressions. And I'm sure if your transgressions are like mine, they're just like a giant cloud. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, it, nobody really should perish. But some will, and some do. Because God gave us the opportunity to be saved, but it doesn't mean that he gave us the mandatory solution that would be automatically applied to us if we didn't choose to follow his way, his will, and do what he says. Because a lot of times people think that, well, I just get saved and I go my own way. And it's, no, you get saved because God wants you to do it his way, to follow him. Not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were justified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. God does come to us, and by his mercy, and by his grace changes us and causes us even like this camera to be repaired in a way we wouldn't know or to help us in time of need or to be still with us when we want to just be here alone with God and with his Holy Spirit to allow him to come to us in a hummingbird or a butterfly or in the wind or in the breeze and to let us know that in each of these he is talking to us in some way that he is speaking through his word at times to us telling us the way we should go and what he's done for us. Occupied till I come. 
The Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority unto his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. And you know, that's why it was so challenging and I went out of my way to work on this because it is my father's business. It is the Lord himself who gave us this opportunity to share in the devotions that people would come to him and to know him in a more personal and intimate way. To sit down and have coffee with him. To discover you can hear his voice. To know that he is in you and with you and works for you by his mercy and grace, not by his condemnation, but by his salvation that he's given to you, to learn that in every relationship you have, he must come first. He must be that which binds you through his love to each and every single human being that we might be able to share the love of God to. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Every man's works shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And you know, it's when these struggles come and the trials, like the camera going out or the sound going out or then me tearing apart the computer or trying to change this and change that and adapt with microphones and adapt with sound and finally going back to just, Lord, I can't do it, and slapping this little camera back together, and bingo, it works. And you go, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you just go, oh, 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 oh yes, oh, yes. When, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, when you're wealthy, you don't depend upon God quite as much. And so I feel sorry for people that have all the money in the world, they just run right out and buy a new one or do this or do that, because they don't really see God work in every detail of their life in little ways and little things, because a poor man will cry out for everything because he doesn't have any other resource to go to. So when this poor man cried out, the Lord here heard him and delivered him out of all of his fears, which is the example of the work that he's given me to do by providing for it in the camera and the sound and the computers and all the free stuff that... I'm able to do so many blogs and so many websites, all free, which other people charge and do and make and take and use and whatever they do with them, you know, with money, you know, and you can do it without that because God said he would make a way if, if you want to share his love freely, you received his grace and mercy freely, you must give back to the people what you have so received freely also. And I've been spoiled rotten out of my mind with the abundance of wisdom and knowledge and personal relationship with Jesus, that that's all I want now is to share that. I don't care what you do with you. Don't follow me. Follow the Lord in you. You know, I mean, go where God wants you to go, not where I tell you to. Personally, I tell you to go somewhere else where I'm not, because I like small fellowships. I like to be intimate with God and a few people. But for you, learn of the Lord and taste and see that the Lord is good and His grace and His mercy will go with you today all the days of your life and just walk with Him in humility and tenderness and kindness.